Thanks for being here today. This is George Headley with Hard Hat Biz Coach. Today we're going to talk about one of the biggest problems there is in the construction industry today, finding enough people that really want to work hard and work for you in a positive, productive manner. Today we're going to talk about developing talent, how to hire, retain, and motivate a winning team. So hopefully you you get on board today and throw, learn some tips to help you basically build a great team, uh, build a great place to work that really people want to work at and they'll come to work for you and you will enjoy them and they will enjoy you. And that's the goal for today. So as we get started, let's talk about uh, where we're going. So when I first started my company, Headley Construction, oh gosh, 30, 40 years ago, I was just me, myself, and I, and I built it up to about 150 employees in three or four years through the 70s and then the 80s and then the 90s. And I, I was building commercial and industrial and office buildings. And we did we were general contractors and we did our own concrete work. So I had as many as 75 guys on my concrete crew throughout many, many years of construction, building constru concrete tilt-up projects. And uh, it was really fun. The people problems weren't like they are today. We didn't have much trouble finding people. Retaining them was another thing and uh, motivating them and inspiring them to do the best they can. That always is a, is a strong and tough issue. But let's talk about ways to solve it today. So my current role is uh, helping contractors get to the next level and build a great place to work. So as many of you know, I, I, I provide business coaching and help contractors grow profit and build a better company. So if I can ever help you, give me, an, give me an email and we'll set up a time to talk. So today we're gonna to talk about talent development. Talent development. So the first question I wanna ask is, are you an effective leader? Are you an effective manager? Do your people do what you want them to do? Do they show up when you want them to show up? Do they perform? Are they accountable? And so the real question is, how do we get them to do what we want them to do? So are you a winning coach? You know, we just saw Kansas City win the Super Bowl. That was exciting. And, you know, Duke, uh, great coach, Mike, uh, winning coach forever, and he's retired. And the coach isn't the, 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 the school isn't winning as many games this year. So it's a struggle. So winning coaches improve results. They achieve results. They have a clear vision of what they want. They have a winning game plan, a strategy, plays that everybody performs, and they practice and they practice to ensure that the plays are instituted in a great way. They delegate. They stay off the field. Their assistants call the play. They're supervisors. And they work hard developing talent. They want to hire the best people. They want to coach them, mentor them, train them, motivate and inspire them. And they want to make sure they have the right people in the right positions that have the right talent and ability. And they make sure they have a written playbook and job descriptions. So their job is to pr promote teamwork and motivate their players to win and follow the rules and follow the systems. They hold regular team meetings. They have ongoing practice sessions and training. And they set regular targets and goals and they have scorecards and statistics on every one of their, their players. They know who's the winners. And then they hold them accountable to perform. And they hold them clearly responsible to meet the deadlines and do the activities as required. Now, what do they do? They win games. And they achieve the results through people. So as you think about your role as a business leader, manager, supervisor, What's your role? Your role as a head coach is to manage and motivate the players. One of my one of my business associates always says, "My job is to hire and inspire." But I think most of us in this in this industry think it's you know we should hire good people and let them do their job and hopefully it works out. But you but but really the average contractor really doesn't train much. I just did a survey of forty clients of mine. And the average training is a, less than 10 hours a week. Some do 40, uh, 10 hours a year, I'm sorry. Some do 40, but most are doing two to seven hours a week and mostly safety training, but not performance and activity training of how to do the job professionally, proficiently, and efficient. So you have tough decisions. What's your decisions to get to the next level? 
how do you keep hoping players get better if there's no training, if there's no playbooks, is if there's no accountability, is there's no regular meetings? We've got to do what the head coaches of the NFL and the winning teams do on a regular basis in order to build a better company. Just for your education and uh, improvement, I do have my book available. It's on Amazon.com. Get your construction business to always make a profit. It includes the hard hat blueprint biz builder blueprint to help you lay out and design your strategic business plan i also have on my website hardhatbizcoach.com i have a, a total online 25 hours of training courses including 30 page workbooks for each course and each course includes all sorts of materials on how to build a company estimating and bidding strategies, winning more work, field and project management, construction financial management 101, all the things you need to run a really strong business. I've got over 100 templates on my website. Just click on tools and templates and you'll see it and they're available or Excel spreadsheets that I personally used in my business. Click the send me more information and I'll be glad to set up a time for an introductory coaching call to help you. So leading, managing and coaching a winning team is not about control. It's about motivating, inspiring, encouraging, and making sure we set clear understanding of what's expected. It's not about control or doing the work. And many of us are so busy doing the work, we don't have time for coaching, training, mentoring, all the things we need to do to, to build that winning team. We just work, and hopefully the guys can keep up. So you don't control others. They decide if they're going to do things. You can't force them to do something. So the question is, do you motivate do you, to perform? Do you want people to, to do what you want them to do? You've got to follow the leader, motivating, inspiring. And so people follow the leader. They don't follow the boss. They don't follow the hard-nosed son of a gun. They hire a leader they want to follow. So I want you to think about, they don't really want to follow a boss or a dictator or a hard-nosed, you know what, SOB, son of a builder, right? <laughs> and uh, it, so, so I always say your input equals their output. If you're providing great input, you're going to get great output. If you provide weak input, you're not going to get great output. High control equals low performance. The more you let people pr perform in a positive, accountable way, the higher they'll perform. So are you an inspiring leader? Do you do what you need to do to keep your crew and your team motivated to want to do what's necessary to make a success and achieve results? So think about what you do versus what you should do. Is it your people or is it your leadership? Generally, it's the leader is the problem. You know, they don't fire they don't fire the quarterback, they fire the leader, the coach. And so think about what makes what makes an effective leader. What do you have to do? Got to have a vision of where we want to go. You've got to have clear targets and goals that we track on a regular updated basis. My job as the leader is to hold people accountable. And a lot of entrepreneurs, business owners really don't like to hold people accountable. They're afraid they're going to get upset. They're afraid they're going to quit. No, if we do it in a coaching, mentoring, training, helping way, we can help people achieve the goals. We delegate. We trust others. We let go of control. And we make those tough decisions about the people that perform or don't, and we replace them or train them. It's a choice. And so we have to coach, mentor, train, work with them one-on-one -on -one to retain, motivate, and inspire your talent to become the best talent they can be. So your job is to move the, move the, the goal to a higher level and get them to work harder to perform at a higher level. That's your input. You're a flag planner. Keep moving that flag up the hill. So think about, are you an effective leader? Uh, do you achieve winning results through people? Do people want to follow you? So uh, are you inspiring? Are you achieving winning results? Are you mediocre results? Your people aren't doing what you want them to do. Maybe your input is the problem. 
So I don't know about you, but I've got two two boys. They're great. They're fully grown and on, on their own for years now. But this is at one of my son uh, Dan's gra high school graduation. And I'm this big, tough, macho, construction, let's pour some concrete guy. And I'm trying to get them to do their homework, go to school. Uh, you know, they're on a team. They're on swimming and water polo like I was. And uh, it's so, so hard to motivate your kids, right? You know, you try everything. You try pep talks, two-way communication, listening, all the stuff you're supposed to do, but nothing works, you know? And I realize leadership is about influence. My job is to influence others to want to do what I want them to do, to want to do what I want them to do. So the key word is want. I've got to get them to want to do more. That's a motivational, inspirational leadership trait that's a must today. You can't just scream and yell at people. You, you know, when you want your dog to sit, you don't kick them. When you want your dog to, to fetch, you don't like smash them with a hammer because they're not they're not performing. You've got to coach them, mo motivate them, and encourage them to do what you want them to do. So so it's like being a parent. If you're not getting the results, you got to change the input. And uh, you got to make some tough decisions to be a better teacher, leader, mentor, coach, motivator. I've tried everything, and it's hard. And it doesn't come natural to me. My personality is not a natural motivator. I had to learn how to become a motivator. I had to learn how to make it a priority to inspire. I had to make it a priority to teach them and train them and meet with them and coach them and mentor them. What about you? So if you've got a dog, you know what you have to do to get him to learn. We, we just got a new puppy a few months ago, and we sent him to a training. And we got to continually work with him to encourage him to sit and come and, and, and lay down and, and shut up and be quiet and not jump on people, et cetera, right? And so they need discipline and motivation. You don't kick them when they're down. So what do I have to do to get my dog and or my people to do what I want them to do? So the question is, what do people want? Gallup, you know, Gallup, Gallup polls, they did a survey, uh, and there was a great book out, First Break All the Rules. I read that a long time ago, and it's a great book on how to motivate people and how to get results from people. And they, they studied 80,000 people, and they learned that the things that motivate people make them want to perform at a higher level are simple. So we think it's money. We think it's, you know, free time. We think it's work for a good company. No, it's really simple. It's four things that make the difference. Number one, they have to know exactly what you want. Clear expectations. That's a number one trait. If you don't tell them exactly what you want, the end results, how you're going to measure them, how you're going to hold them accountable, when we're going to meet to go over the results, what their scorecard is going to look like, what the goal is, clearly. So if I say done, what do they? What do I mean by done? I want a project done. Well, does that mean we've the lights are on, the power works, the tenants moved in? Or does that mean we've called for final inspection and there's still trash all over the place? So I have to be clear what I expect. And so we've got milestones and deadlines. We've got to be clear on the milestones, the check-ins, the follow-up, and the deadlines, right? And what's clearly expected. So that's why we need job descriptions, a playbook, just like football. People have to know what their role is and what they're accountable and responsible to do. And if they don't, and if it's not written, they won't remember it. You know, you tell them 15 things to do uh, in the morning, and they can't remember what happened, but what you told them by 15 minutes later, because it's not written down. I always say the shortest pencil is better than the longest memory. We just write it down, make a list, make a checklist real clear, draw them a picture, take a photo of how you want things done. People re will remember what they see versus what they hear. So the second most important thing is regular recognition and praise. On a weekly basis, we have to go up to good old Joe who's working for you and say, Joe, man, I really appreciate that you got that rebar in the right place or you cut that beam at the right place right location, or you came in a little early and worked hard. Really appreciate that. Thanks a lot. It's just a simple little one sentence, two sentences to your people on a regular basis. you got to get in the habit. And see, I'm not in the habit uh, as, a, as a tough son of a gun, 
construction engineer, project manager, rah, get her done, numbers guy. Uh, and, and so I had to learn how to, you know, really encourage my people through some motivation, some recognition, some praise. Hey, you're going to, doing a good job. I want to thank you. It's just simple. I thank you. I appreciate what you did yesterday. It's so simple. Number three, they've got to understand the big picture, the vision, where we're going and why we're doing what we're doing, where we're going and why, and how it's going to help them get to the next level and, and meet their career goals. So we got to have regular team meetings. I always encourage you to have a quarterly all-company meeting where you can tell them the state of the union, the good, bad, and the ugly. we got more work. We're doing this. And we need more of that. And we got to improve this. Or, or things are great. And give out some, some celebration rewards for people who achieve goals. So we've got to let people know where we're going and why. Why we're doing what we're doing. Lastly, Number four, these are the top four. There's, there were 10 things, but these are the top four. But one and two and three and four are the ones that really improve the bottom line in your people management. Number four, we've got to appreciate them as a person, and they have to know you care about them. You know the old sign, whiff them, what's in it for me? I have to sit down with my people on a regular basis, not every week, but occasionally, once every month or so, and say, hey, how are you doing? Are you achieving your goals? How can I help you get where you want to go? I have to appreciate them. I have, they have to know I care about them as a person, not just as a, you know, hardworking person to push, push dirt, push wood, cut trees, whatever they're supposed to be doing, right? And so that's the key. So I have to lead, coach, trust, and uh, uh, delegate and let go of control. I've got to stop working and make people a top priority. Managing your people has to be a top priority, not doing the work. The people get the work for you if you motivate them properly and get them to do what you want them to do. But if they're not doing what you want to do, you step in and do it for them, so they just sit and watch you. We've driven by hundreds of job sites where you see six guys standing around watching one guy put a pipe in the ground. One guy saw a piece of wood or something. I mean, it's crazy. You got got the boss doing the work and everybody's watching. What's that all about? Why does a boss go to Home Depot when they run out of tools or parts? So the 12 guys stand around waiting for the boss to come back. Send somebody. Everybody who works for you is smart and wants to be trusted, wants to be accountable, wants to be responsible to achieve the goal. But they just got to be let. They got to be let to achieve the goal. Let go, man. And so what do we have to do? We have to design our org chart to win and allow for profitable, profitable growth. So most companies get stuck at the level of what they can do and control, the owner, the manager. If I'm going to be in charge. i got to control. I can only do so much. I can't grow if I've got to do it all myself. And so I get stuck. We get stuck at the level of what I can do. And you can't improve performance if you're doing too much of the work. So you can't. You're not even managing your people. You're just reacting, putting out fires, and all those kinds of things. So what do I have to do to build another crew, to grow a bigger team, to grow, to improve productivity and performance, uh, add more services? Whatever I want to do, I can't do if I'm in control. I have to let go to grow, right? So I have to put the right players in the right positions with the right talent and the right attitude for the current and future needs, plus which will allow the business to grow and I can make more money. So, so what that means is I have to build for the future. Rather than hire cheap, hire a pro, pay more money, then you can let go to grow. You hire cheap, you got to follow them around all and tell them what to do. So you can't go what you should go do what you should do, which is planning and organization and sales and in uh, checking the numbers and looking for better innovative ideas of how to do things better, faster, quicker, all those kinds of things. So think about what your role is. Your, your company is currently designed with the people you've got and the systems you have or don't have to deliver the same results you're currently getting. And if you're not happy with the results, it's your input equals the output. Your report card is what? Your P&L is showing you if you're doing well or not. And if it's not, it's a, uh, it's the outside indicator of you. 
and how you lead and manage people. If you can't find any help, it's because nobody wants to work for you or you're not doing what you need to do to go attract people. And we'll cover that in a few minutes. So <laughs> kind of funny. I've seen your org chart. It kind of looks like this. Everybody around you is weak and stupid and can't get the job done. At least that's how you treat them potentially. But you got great people. You just got to allow them to grow. And so think about what I have to do to get to the next level. So here's a typical org chart of, of, a, of a, just a big picture contracting business. On the left side, we have the, the wealth. We got to, you know, obviously the goal is to build some wealth. But then we have to spend focus on winning work, getting work, growing the business, business development, sales and marketing. Someone has to be responsible for that. And if you're not generating high margin work, it's because you're not going after it because you're too busy over on the other side of the, of the organizational chart. Then we have to price work, and the key word is accuracy. Accuracy. So we got to we got to bid work, we've got to price it, we got to negotiate, we got to sell, and then of course, hopefully, we land a great, juicy, profitable contract. Then we have to build the work, so we can break it into one, two, three departments. We've got project management. We've got field management. We've got equipment management. So those are three functions that have to be managed. And if you don't have any people doing it, that means you're doing it, which means you're stressed out and overworked again. You imagine an NFL football team without an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator? No. Head coach can't do it all. Now, some coaches call the plays, but then they have somebody else do everything else. So think about how your operations run. Just look at a football team. Everybody we just saw the Super Bowl a few days ago, and, and just think about it. What, what are they doing? What, what are you doing? What are you not doing? And, of course, the, the orange circle is the team builder. We need to have someone in charge of talent, developing, hiring, recruiting, motivating, training, all those kinds of things. Someone has to be assigned with – with talent development, basically, building your team, uh, you know, setting up the training systems, making sure everybody's getting uh, fed with the right material, making sure we're having reviews, making sure their pays, matching the industry, doing all the recruiting, doing all the HR management, all those kinds of things. So if nobody's doing it, that means you are, which means you're not, so you can't find any help. I got a lot of clients, with 60, 70, 80 clients, and, you know, we have these peer group meetings a couple times a year. We all get together and we talk about it. And the number one challenge is always I can't find enough help. Well, well, what are you doing about it? Are you running an ad? Well, not, not, the, no. Who's in charge of recruiting in your company? Well, nobody. Um, you're not even running an ad? No. Well, I got a bunch of resumes and I just have time to look at them. <laughs> no wonder you got to make talent a priority. If it's not a priority, how's it going to happen? Too busy chasing doorknobs and nails and concrete and wood and everything else you're doing, right? And your tools. Uh, so, so we got to make it a priority. And lastly, but most importantly, we got to make some money. So we've got the uh, accounting, admin, administration, uh, contract management, all that kind of stuff. We better know our numbers. We better have a really good high-end accounting manager, full charge bookkeeper, controller who can really run the accounting. And it amazes me how many guys and gals are in business and have no clue. You know, they either can't add or they don't know what they're trying to add because their, their numbers are all messed up. Uh, they, you know, they're late. They're, they're, they don't add. They're not right. You don't get the reports you need. You don't keep track of your job costs. You know, when, when how much money you make? I don't know. I'm meeting my accountant in four months. You know, it's crazy. So anyway, little, little side there. So think about it. You have the right people in the right positions. You have accountability and responsibility. People know exactly what they're supposed to do, clearly understood expectations. Are they managed? Do you have somebody manage them? So ask yourself, what positions in your org chart are you doing that you could, could delegate? So what positions need to be hired, assigned, or replaced? What new positions will help you and your business grow and improve? And what roles and responsibilities should you stop doing? What are you doing you shouldn't be doing? If you're not doing it, you could get somebody else to do it, and you could spend more time building your great business and motivating and managing your people. 
So don't be herding cats all day. It's not what your job description is, right? So let's keep going here. Uh, let's talk about your, um, let's talk about clear expectations, number one issue. So when I go into companies, I work with them. We get the whole teams together, the, all the foremen, the crew leaders, some of the managers, the supervisors, the uh, project managers, the estimators, uh, office managers. We get everybody together, and we make a list of everything I want each put person to do. So we might have supervisor, crew, crew leader, crew supervisor, uh, field supervisor, field manager, project manager, project engineer, project assistant, project coordinator, project administrator, all the different boxes depending on what kind of company you have and what kind of work do you do. And then we have to create a list of the accountabilities and responsibilities. Accountabilities are results. What results are they accountable for with deadlines? You know, what do we have to do on this project? How much money, what are we trying to do? Schedule, quality, punch list, callbacks, all those kinds of things. And then what are the tasks and, and activities and duties they're accountable to achieve. So guidelines, expectations, accountability, responsibilities. So I, what I call GEAR, G-E-A-R. I, I got to have clear guidelines so and expectations. And then I can hold them accountable and give them a list of what responsibilities and tasks and activities they must do by a certain time. So we sit down, we, we get everybody together like the picture shows. And here's another one, another company I was working with their management team. And you can see we have a separate piece of flip chart paper for each position. And everybody comes up with their post-it notes and puts down what the must-dos are for each position. Then we type them up. We make a real clear one-page list for each employee, for each type of person uh, or type of position. And it's real clear what they're required to do. There's no misunderstanding what's expected clear expectations, right? And then, of course, we give them some levels of authority and chain of command, who they report to, all those kinds of things. By the way, we got to be careful. Uh, and then we write it up. Here's, here's an example. You know, if you need some help with this, give me a call. Uh, I do this all the time with people. And uh, I, I, I can help you easily to work through your job descriptions, accountabilities, responsibilities, what's expected on a regular basis. So if you're interested in having me help you, let me know. But first of all, the pizza rule of management. This is the one thing I really like to focus on. You can only manage five or six people. You can only have five or six people that you're their boss or their manager. If you have more than that, you're out of control. Five or six is it. So if you have a crew leader with 12 guys, it's out of control. He needs a number two, like an offensive defensive coordinator, to help him run the project. It's just not going to happen. So if you and your senior leadership role have, you know, bookkeeper, project manager, supervisor, three foremen, an estimator, and I don't know, quit. it's like seven or eight people, you're out of control. You got to get organized here and reassign and simplify your, your, your role and responsibilities. Okay, like I said, if I can help you, give me a call, email me, gh at hardhatbizcoach.com, hardhat bizcoach.com, B-I-Z coach. And I'll, I'll be glad to sit down with you. We'll do a Zoom call and we'll figure out how I can help you. And if you're interested in having me help you move forward with your, with your program. All right. So let's start talking about some talent development programs here. Okay. So why do employees quit? Why do people quit? What, what do you think the reason employees are quitting today? Well, they get a better job. Well, they get, they don't like working for you. Well, it's not money. Money is one of the reasons. If they have a if they're enjoying their position and their job, they're going to stay there. What do people want today? People want a work-life balance. People today work to live versus live to work. And so I've got to have some sort of work-life balance in the operation. Number two, I got to have a growth potential. They got to they have to have a career opportunity, advancement opportunity, promotion opportunity. They have to see the future. You can't just keep having them do the same thing. They, they want to work for a company that has investment in training, education, and learning. 
They want someone to show they care. They want some coaching, some in mentoring, some feedback. They want some help getting to the next level. Believe it or not, most people want more accountability and more re responsibility, and they want to be trusted. They want information, results, scorecards. They want to know where we're going, the big picture, the vision, the values, the culture, the performance of the company, how we're doing. And then they want honest, open, trend, uh, excuse me, communication. They want, they want somebody to be honest with them. Yeah, we're doing good. Well, we're not. Tell them the truth. Um, we want more meetings. They want to know what's going on every week or two. And they basically want a better teamwork, positive attitude environment in a company they're proud of, a lot of teamwork, a lot of contribution. We all work together. We have some group meetings. We have some fun. And they want, lastly, well, not lastly, another 400 things, but people want to be incentivized, compensated for results. We need to give them a, 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 a spiff, an incentive to improve and to achieve results. Because if you don't, they're just working. It'd be like playing football with no end zone. Nobody cares. They just keep running plays. Oh, who cares, right? So in order to make that happen, we need some steps. So the top 10 things uh, employees want from their employers. Top, as I was saying, the top 10 things employees want from their employers, you know, number one, they want work-life balance. They want growth potential. They want training and education, coaching, mentoring, and feedback, more accountability, clear company vision. They want to know where we're going and why. Open, honest uh, communication, a personal, caring, fun place to work, a company they're proud of, and they want teamwork. And then number 11, that's 10. It's, it's a special one, is incentives based on performance. Okay, so what are the steps? Steps. What are the steps? First of all, the you, you've got to have a written business plan with a clear vision and values. Everybody's got to know what we stand for. Number two, we've got to hold people accountable. You can't let some people follow the rules and some not. You either all follow them or get rid of the rules. So we've got to hold people accountable. Number three, we have to have a people plan, a talent development plan. We've got to have a plan. We've got to have a written plan of what our goal is for hiring, for training, for mentoring, coaching, promotion from within, incentives, and culture. We've got to make that happen. We've got to set up regular team meetings, project meetings, uh, group meetings, like in a construction company, you've got a foreman meeting, project manager meetings, superintendent meetings. Maybe we'll have a monthly uh uh, field meeting, quarterly field meeting, uh, all company meetings. We've got to have regular meetings that are not they're, – they're, we're going to do them, right? And then everybody wants a scorecard. People need to know what, how they're doing. They need a scorecard, a scoreboard with an incentive to perform at a higher level or meet the goals. So what do we have to do to make that happen? So we've got those five or six things there, and then we have – uh, how do we build a great workplace, culture, environment, fun, enjoyable, a great place to work? Uh, first of all, we need to have a managing manager, somebody who manages their people on a regular basis. They meet every week, at least every week, one-on-one -on -one with their people to sit down and go through how they're doing and what, how they're achieving and how they're performing. Number two, I said we got to show people who care. So I've got to dig in and ask my people on a at least a monthly basis, how you doing? How can I help? What are your future goals? How's your family? How's your situation? Regular one-on-one -on -one sessions. Number three, we've got to make sure they understand the big picture. So we've got to have those meetings. I've got to make sure they clearly understand the company goals and how they fit in. And then I've got to provide that recognition and praise on an ongoing basis. Uh, to me, it's weekly. It's got to be weekly. Everybody needs to be thanked, appreciated, pat on the back weekly, not group meetings, one-on-one. -on -one. And my job is to inspire, encourage. I'm a cheerleader. I've got a sign on my computer right here. It says, be a cheerleader for my clients. Promote teamwork, participation, fun, positive attitudes, values. And so I've got to focus more time 
got to dedicate at least a half a day a week to coaching and mentor, mentoring my key players. I got to really focus on helping them get to the next level. And so I've got regular meetings with them every week going through their performance and then how can they become better leaders. And then I've got to have a promotion from within program, which we'll talk about in a minute. And I got to make sure they got the right tools, technology, software, equipment out in the field, uh, good stuff, good vehicles, uh, you know, don't chintz on that stuff. Always have a backup. And then I've got to focus on work, work-life work balance. I've got to have a little flexibility in my system. I'm not a, 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 a proponent of, you know, off-site working, you know, virtual working, but we still got to have a little flexibility in our daily, uh, daily calendar, weekly calendar for our employees because they have a life too. You know, they have kids, they have doctor's appointments, their wife gets sick, their, their soccer games, all the other things. We've got to have a little flexibility. Uh, and, and nobody wants overtime anymore. Nobody wants to work overtime. Nobody wants to work weekends. They live, they work to live. It, you know, they don't want to make more money, but they really, it's, it's not worth it to them anymore. So they don't want much overtime. So think about what I have to do to build a great place to work. So uh, uh, I've got to have a, a culture uh, that makes it really exciting. I've got a regular talent enhancement program as part of my program. No stupid rules. I got to I got to have sandwiches or snacks, sodas. I just got to fill the refrigerator or bring it out in the job. You know, don't be so cheap. Just do it. You know, give them a uniform. Give them some T-shirts. Give them a give them a nice uh, stuff to wear with your logo and things on it. We have a weekly team lunch or breakfast. Maybe we can do uh, uh, some other fun things, uh, open workspaces. Uh, we do a company directory. Everybody knows everybody's name. One thing I'm very, very proud of is business cards for everyone. We always did that. And we give them an authority of up to $500. They can spend it without talking to their boss. You know, you could set different levels based on the different positions, but give them some authority to spend some money or make some de decisions. And we're going to have some regular team-building fun events. We have an all-quarterly meeting, and part of it's fun. And maybe lunch with a boss or job site lunches when we hit milestones, company events. We used to have an on, uh, a quarterly you know, soccer game or volleyball or bowling. We always had something fun, right? Bus tours for the staff, show them all the jobs. And then we have a regular recognition and awards program have do it right awards we have safety awards we have team players of the month the golden hard hat golden rock award for the guy who worked the hardest that month recruiting incentive pay that's a big deal we have to have that safety bucks every time we no accidents for a quarter or a month everybody gets a buck per day uh go the extra mile award no punch list no callback award it, you know there's so many things we can do if we just sit down and think about it we, got, we can give out clothes, shirts, jackets, tape measures, uh, gift cards, coolers, all sorts of stuff you could give out as a thank you, a reward, an incentive, uh, a raffle. And we want to also think about involving the employees in the talent development program. We, we set up an employee enhancement committee, and we let them think about the training and the benefits and free time and educational payoffs and uh, participation, team building, what can we do for fun, uh, all those kinds of things. And then, you know, we can have incentives. What kind of incentives? The, the, the best thing I want is an open book. I want everybody to know how many hours they have in their job and how they're doing. And we could do incentives on that, on-time incentives, safety, no accidents incentive, milestones, uh, uh, employee uh you know, long-term incentives. Uh, a lot of companies I sp speak at their conferences, their you know, their annual meetings, and they're at, they take them to a casino, and uh, I go and speak, and they bring their their all their employees and their spouses or their their significant others, and it, it's a party. It's really fun. Um, we pay for referrals for leads or employees, um, and so then of course we have to have an effective, proactive hiring and recruiting program. And then I got to let go and just let the people do it, right? So how do we attract 
<coughs> excuse me, how do we attract, recruit, and hire a winning team? And the goal is we got to win the war for talent. So it starts with me at the top. I've got to be accountable, and I've got to be a hiring employee talent development promoter. That's got to be one of my top things I have to do. So my talent development plan uh, is, uh, is important. I want to make sure everybody knows the values, the culture, teamwork's the positive. I want to build a place that's the employer of, cho of choice. People want to work for us, not have a job. I don't, I didn't do anything. They're, they're looking for money, another $5, $5 a month, and they'll split. So I've got to have a, a, ret a retainage and a recruitment program. What can I do to enhance that? And how much time do I have to invest in recruiting? My job is to make sure I got key people. I can't run my business and grow it without key people. My, that's my job. I'm the head coach. I had to make sure we got great players. Otherwise, we're going to lose. So who in your company is accountable for your hiring program and your incentive program? Uh, do you pay top dollar to attract the best, or do you try to pay low and hope it works out? You, how about great benefits, health and health insurance, time off, vacation pay, all those kinds of things. Longevity, you got to raise. You have a training ladder. And why money is not the top reason people stay at your company. It's the overall environment, values, culture, teamwork, positive, fun, work-life balance, training opportunities. Uh, and, you know, I don't know about you, but in many parts of the country, there's a lot of Latinos, and we don't speak English. So we have to have a Latino-friendly culture and employee workplace. So we need to hire multilingual people. It, it, you might be Latino, you might be Italian, it might be whatever it is. We've got to get people on our leadership team who speak more than one language. And maybe i got to take, take a couple classes and learn a little bit, right? So, and, and lastly, I've got to have a company that has opportunities for promotion and growth. So what are you doing about a promotion program where a foreman, his job is contingent and his incentive is contingent upon him training, developing his replacement or his number two on his crew. So if he's gone or he gets promoted, there's somebody to step up to leadership. That's the important thing. So first thing we have to do is take a hard look at our org chart and see what positions we need to fill. What positions do I need to fill? So first, I got to have clear position job descriptions, clearly listing the accountabilities and the responsibilities with specific results that each position must achieve. You know, if you only hit 200 in baseball, a batting average, you're not going to stick around very long. We need, we need 250 to 300 hitters, especially out in the outfield, so we can win some games. So if I've got a salesperson I'm going to hire, I'm going to make it real clear – his job is to bring in $5 million of new customers per year. It's real clear with a margin of 10, 20, 30%, whatever your number is, right? The superintendent's job is no punch list, no callbacks, and on schedule and on labor hour budget. Real simple. Keep it simple. Those three or four things. Estimator, accuracy within 1% or 2% on labor hours and no missed items. It's real clear what the job description is for those key positions in your company. You probably got five or ten things that are, that are absolutely must-dos. So we got to define the, the, the responsibilities, and we got to seek the talent that we need to fill those boxes. I want professionals that can do it without me micromanaging and babysitting and worrying about them. And so in order to make that happen, I've got to have clear principles. I've got to have clear values, uh, commitment, chemistry. Uh, positive attitude. Uh, they always say hire for attitude and train, train for uh, you know for achievement and uh, performance. Right? Hire attitude first, and uh, you got to be coachable. So the thing, second thing we need to do is what what hire, what players do I need? I got to hire or or add or replace. So you got to – a coach can't win. There's my friend. I got my arrow. It's old uh, L.A. Rams, Rich Saw, one of my old buddies. Unfortunately, he died a few years ago, but we we're really good friends. He was all pro for 12 years, centers for the Rams. and He was the greatest guy ever. 
and I've got to rate my talent. I'd rate him an A+. Plus. So you rate your talent, ABC, players with the right attitude and the right competencies, willing to grow, living the values, and i got to make sure I put the right people in the right positions. And if I don't – if I've got the wrong person in the wrong if the wrong, wrong position, I'm hurting my bottom line. Plus, one bad apple ruins it for the whole team. You know, it's all about teamwork. No grumps, no grouch. You know, uh, what do I need? So what's not getting done? What do I need done? Could I get an assistant to the, my project manager so my project manager can have more time to do their big job, schedule, quality, motivation, planning, uh, uh, writing good contracts, versus doing paperwork. If I could get them an assistant to do that, I can leverage them to do more better, more better, more better. <laughs> okay. So, so, uh, so then I need, uh, I, I've got to have a system. I've got to have a recruiting system to find, attract, recruit, and hire top talent. I got to have a recruiting program. So do you have a recruiting program? Do you know do you have steps? Do you, is it on autopilot? Do you have somebody do you, you know, it's not you. Now you're going to stay involved to make sure it's happening. But we got to have someone ma- uh, do the work. So I need it. I need first of all I need someone to help me. I need a hiring recruiter coordinator. Someone in my company is in charge of recruiting. It's probably a salesy person who can talk to people and convince them why they should come to work for us. It's not somebody from accounting who's Probably not an outgoing person, not to pick on accounting people because I love them because they do a really good job of what they do, but they maybe aren't the right person to be your recruiter or encourager for someone to start work for you soon. So we got to have a file. We got to have the, they got to know the competitor's pay scale and benefits, uh, whether it's union or non union or competitors around the corner. Uh, you know, if I'm in uh, Chicago, I'm paying a lot more than I am 100 miles away. So I got to know the differences. And if I'm close to Chicago, I can't be paying out of town rates. Uh, it's going to cost more. And I've got to, I've got to, I've got to have a list on speed dial of employment services, recruiting, uh, headhunters, hirers, uh, maybe trade schools where they've got teachers that are training people to, you know, learn the trades, colleges, universities. I'm looking for a project engineer. I'm going to be in touch with my local a college as a construction management program and try to go over there and talk to some people. And then I've got to, I've got to get the ads out. I got to recruit. I got to have business cards and flyers and videos. And I got to, I got to sit, sort through the resumes and set appointments and interviews, phone calls first, and then face-to-face interviews with these people. So that's part of the recruiting coordinator's job description. And they can, they can do the initial screening interview Where'd you work? How much do you want? All those simple questions. Uh, what can you do? What can you then do? Do you need a do you need a vehicle? Do you need a phone? Can you get to work? All those kinds of things. Are you, are you on drugs? Do you you know all the questions, right? They can get through that, and then if they they fly through, then we can set it up with the big the big guys and gals to 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 make the big decisions. And so, <clears throat> and. We, can, we also need a referral incentive program. If anybody in your company refers somebody, uh, they can manage that whole program and with the prizes and the incentives and the, and the compensation for that. All right, so what's next? So another thing I was is very important to me is hire, hire the best. You know, Tom Brady, I don't know what he was getting paid. Tampa Bay hires him for a jillion dollars a week, highest paid quarterback at the time. And guess what? They win the Super Bowl. They do really well. And why is that? Because they got the top talent. They don't have B players. They don't have C players. They got A players. And they got a lot of a lot of great players followed Tom Brady to the team, and they just took over the world, right? Everybody loved them. First rule, don't hire cheap and hope they work out. They're not going to help your company grow unless you really luck out, but they're going to suck all your time and energy or your foreman's time and energy trying to keep them working. So we got to offer competitive pay above market with full benefits or transportation or cell phones or holidays and vacation. So I want to pay for somebody that's going to help me grow the company, not somebody who's going to do work. If I'm going to hire a project manager, I want someone who can be my VP someday. If I'm going to hire a superintendent, 
or a foreman. I want somebody who potentially be, could become an estimator for us someday. So I want to pay for winners, not the position. So sometimes I need to look at my staff and say, do I need to top grade? So I need A players. So if I rank them A, B, C, D, I need more A's. What do I have to do to get rid of some B's and C's and top grade to all A's? So A players hire A players, B players hire B's and C's. I want to make sure my top people are making the hiring decisions based on what's going to make the biggest impact on our company. So, so think about A players, full charge, professional, get things done, achieve results. Don't lead, lead, need a lot of day-to-day -day activity and solutions for them. They're not knocking on your, hey, boss, they're not calling you every five minutes, asking you to make decisions for them. That's the worst indicator of someone who's not really strong. They, they call you all day on the phone asking you questions. So it's not easy to hire great players. It takes hard work. It takes dedication. It takes your priority to make it happen. So we've got to make uh, recruitment and talent recruitment and hiring a top priority. So we've got to give everybody recruiting business cards. You know, here's some samples. Just Google recruit hiring business cards. There's a jillion of them out there. You just look them up. And everybody needs one. Everybody needs a little hiring brochure. And we've got to have a talent outreach program. Uh, we can do high school seminars. We can do Saturday work work schedules in your yard. Uh, we can get involved in high school and intern programs, summer jobs, part-time jobs, craft training, job fairs, lots of things you can do. And uh, and then when we recruit and when we hire, we got to promote it in our all-company meeting. And so we can also consider headhunters. They're not cheap, but uh, they generally – you have to pay 20% of the first year's salary. And they if they don't last more than six months, they should replace them for free. It's pretty much standard. There are some good ones, uh, but, you know, it's a it's a gamble. You're going to pay 10 or 20 grand to get somebody, maybe 30, a, a high-priced person, and are they going to work out? Well, it's better than nobody, right? But maybe not. I don't know. I, my old joke is hire three, keep one. But uh, it's not really a good, good philosophy of business leadership, right? Okay, so so what's next here? So we want to we want to promote recruit, re <laughs> promote recruiting victories. We want to make sure we stay focused on the uh, victories. If we have uh, if we if somebody referred us at our all company meeting, we want to give them a big hand. We want to pass them a, a check. We give them a a, a bomber jacket. Uh, 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 Kansas City Chiefs jersey with Mahomes on the back. Whatever we do, we make it a big deal. We send them to Vegas for uh, you know a three night vacation and give them a thousand bucks. It's worth it to get a new employee. Now we have rules for that. I'll cover that in a second. So 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 we've got a top grade, positive attitude. Uh, we've got to seek the right people. Uh, we've got to look for the best. And you know what's funny? It's not really funny. It's kind of sad or it's kind of reality. I've got clients that have 200 employees. They never complain about hiring enough people. It just seems to happen. It works for them because they've got they've got a presence in the marketplace. They have a recruiting person on staff. And then I've got guys who've got five or six or ten people, and they I can't find any help. Well, you probably don't have any benefits. You got nobody in your office recruiting. You're doing it while you're working which means it's never happening. It's just, you know, you gotta, you got to be proactive. It can't, it's not going to just happen. I always say hope is not a winning strategy, right? So we look for the right people and uh, look for what they have and done, not what you want them to do or think they're going to do. So finding great talent is like a blind date. You know what you want, but you're not sure you're going to get it. So we got to keep trying. Don't give up. You know, I ran an ad, I didn't get anybody. Well, keep running it. One of my clients in Denver area, he's a concrete, he has a concrete contract, about 60 guys on his crew. And he and he, he landed all his work. He was at 30 and he had to get to 60. And he, he just kept working it. And he realized that on Craigslist or on Indeed or one of the softwares, you have to change your ad every week where it gets stale and goes to the bottom of the list. So it's a constant updating and changing and change the words and change the strategy 
you know, don't just say concrete superintendent, say winning company seeks aggressive young person ready to move up and, and help this company grow, S you know, submit, submit resume, you know, you're going to make it exciting, right? So we need to have some brochures now hiring. Uh, we need to have some, uh, uh, that everybody can, you give them out to everybody in the foreman and the superintendent, all the workers that with business cards that say, we're looking for great people. And you got a referral, you write the guy's name on it uh, from Joe at your company and he passes it out and he gets an incentive. So everybody needs a small brochure with all your benefits and why you, and, and, and then of course we want to pay for referrals. Uh, we want to pay for referrals. So here's a typical program. So the old days, which is about four years ago, you know, hundred bucks you give us a referral. That you know, I won't even buy a gas tank of gas today. So we got to get up there. So we want to have a nice, juicy incentive to get your people motivated to ask their friends to join the company. So we we need a referral incentive program. So your re referral incentive program, you know, you're going to set it up. You're going to pay. For a crew worker, you know, maybe a thousand bucks referral incentive. Don't do two hundred. It won't. Five hundred is a little light. I'd say go a thousand, or uh, plus some days off with pay. Maybe, you know, just set it up the way that works for you. But don't be cheap. People aren't going to get excited about two hundred dollars after taxes. You know, it's not much. So you're they're going to get excited about a thousand, or maybe two thousand for a foreman or a or a project manager, a real senior person. So we're going to pay them. Uh, we're going to pay the new hire an, a signing bonus. I don't know, a couple hundred bucks, two fifty, five hundred dollars. Give them a week's extra pay after a year, uh, whatever it is. Right? We need a, a, a signing bonus. Most companies are doing that today. And then we we pay the referring party, the person in your company who referred this person to come to work for you. We pay them over six months. So you know, thirty days. We give them. If the guy's still there after 30 days, we give them, you know, maybe 25% of the, the total, 250. They're there after uh, 30 days, 60 days, maybe give them another 250. And after six months, give them the balance, $500. So it's that kind of setup that encourages them to want to stay. And you're, the person who referred them is going to make sort of mentor them and hopefully they stay on so that uh, he gets his full, full incentive pay. So think about that. Now, you also might have a subcontractor or supplier referral program. Offer them, I don't know about money, but, you know, you could offer them credit card, uh, a, a prepaid credit card. You could offer them a trip, um, you know, a bonus to something, uh, something fun, take them to a football game, give them tickets to the, what, to Kansas City, if you can afford them now, right, Super Bowl, and uh, uh, and offer them your, your, you know, same thing. If they bring in someone, we'll give you a, a, an initial and then an upgrade, right? Okay, so so we have to then make it easy for recruits. Simple. The company's uh, HR department of Miss 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 or Mister HR is like Mister Formal, Miss Formal. No, keep it simple. If somebody w walks on your job and you like them, your foreman likes them, they should be able to hire them on the spot. So they they have their ten questions, you know name, address, social security number. They they call that in and say, Joe's going to start. He's 25 bucks an hour. I'm going to start him right now. So they start or they start tomorrow. And in the meantime, your HR person, your recruiting person in the office runs all the stuff you need to run, their driver's license, their criminal record, whatever you got to do. You set up the drug test for in a few days and whatever you have to do. But don't let them go. If you let them go, they're gone and they're going to be hired next door tomorrow. So you don't have a, three weeks to make a decision on somebody. you got to make a decision now. Hire them. You can always get rid of them tomorrow. I mean, I mean that's a lot cheaper than wait, hoping they work out and you call them and they're already hired. So keep it simple. Keep it fast. So they visit the job site. you got a sign up there that says now recruiting. They walk on. They talk to your foreman. They talk to your supervisor. And the guy likes them. Uh, he gets the basic six things they need call into the office and say, I got Joe out, John out here. He's going to start this afternoon or I'm going to start tomorrow, run the stuff on him. And 
uh, we'll let you know. We'll, we'll have them fill out the application and can turn it in a week, and we can give them the safety thing in a couple days, and let's get going here, right? We don't want to lose people. So uh, now if you're looking for more of a an office person or a project manager or a supervisor, you might, you know, you're probably going to get resumes in. We need to sort them immediately, and we need to call them immediately if you like them. I always rank them one to ten, and you know, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm going to call them. And I'm going to have my office coordinator call them and say, ask them my ten questions, which I've already drafted out. And you know, uh, where have you worked? How much do you want? You need a car? You need a phone? Uh, can you drive to work? You know, uh, what kind of work have you done? How long have you been there? Send me your resume. And if they look okay, we want to bring them in for 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 a um, for face to face. So don't wait. Do the screening interview and then crank it up. And uh, so the hiring coordinator is so important. It's instant. You can't. It's not B priority. It's an A plus priority, right? And so make it happen. So uh, take a photo when they come in with your phone, so you can remember them. Because I can never remember names, I, but. I, if I see a photo, oh, yeah, that guy, I liked him, uh, and then um, et cetera. So we need a hiring system. We need a, a, a voicemail. So if they call the company, it says, uh, you know, for Joe, click two, three, for hiring uh, information, click four, and it says, hi, this is Susie with the XYZ company. I'm going to walk you through the hiring steps. We'd love to have you consider working for us. Please uh leave your email and your phone number and we'll call you back immediately and we'll set up a, an online, a phone interview ASAP. And then we'll have you meet our manager within one day. We want to, we want to really think you might want to work for us. So we make it simple, fast, proactive. It's got to be a priority. So let's close out with a couple ideas on ads and signs. So how do we attract people to apply? So we've got to have some compelling ads, signs, banners. So we want to have, uh, we want to have, you know, the ones that I see that work. I'm not; these aren't the only ones. Indeed works for project managers, supervisors, office people, uh, estimators. Craigslist works for more for the hourly. Uh, maybe it'd be a, a ad man or a worker in the field. Zip Recruiter and Indeed are relatively the same in power. A lot of a lot of companies are using Facebook to attract locals. Uh, maybe uh, maybe there's a, a, a Hispanic Facebook ad or a Hispanic following. We could maybe there's a wives club or a family club or you know hey X Y Z companies hiring or maybe we could run some uh, videos in on Facebook or uh, a LinkedIn that's, you know, hey, my, my name is George. I'm, we're looking for great people. We've got an opening right now. We've got a great project to start. Plus, we have a promotion program where you can move up in your career over the next five, five months and six months, six years, and become a real talent. And we'd love to have you be on our team and help us get to the next level. So you do a quick little video. You can record it on your phone and up, upload it into LinkedIn or, or Facebook and put it up quickly, right? And make it happen. So, so we want to have multi-language ads. We want to make sure we're in the Hispanic or whatever marketplace you're in. Newspaper, newsletters, uh, uh, recruiting uh, websites, Facebook, LinkedIn. Promote the signing bonus. A lot of companies are uh, actually have a hiring page on their website with all the benefits. You get some testimonials, uh, applications in English and Spanish. Uh, job signs, trucks, banners, whatever you can do. So we've got a uh, here's 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 a typical ad. Uh, you might say ready to move up and run your own job. Maybe we're a growing innovative contractor. We seek a supervisor to manage crews, build high end quality projects. We have great benefits, profit sharing, career growth opportunity, and career co uh, computer skills five years experience, seek team leadership. So we really promote how good it's going to be, right? That's what we're trying to do. Uh, make it positive. So here's some here's some signs. We could have a little brochure there on the left, uh, uh, you know, a little team handout. We can have a sign now hiring in English and Spanish. Uh, 
We have a signing bonus, a little brochure, the little one on the bottom right, signing bonus. Uh, all sorts of ways you can promote. Bumper stickers on your trucks. Most trailers have a sign on them now. Uh, hi, uh, inquire within. Uh, seeking great people. Make it positive. Make it positive, right? And uh, brochures, videos, put it on your website, uh, all those kinds of things. And then and then we need to – we have a pre-screen interview. You know, if we like somebody, we call them up. The hiring coordinator says, hey, what kind of position are you looking for? What's the basic range of your pay you want and benefits, vacation, uh, all those kinds of things? Can you work all year? Can you work weekends? What's the deal? Uh, you know, we do drug testing. Is that okay? We're going to check your references. Uh, do you have a driver's license? Can you get to work? What are your career goals? Do you have any? What, what was your last couple of jobs you worked on? What was your job duty, your responsibility? How long were you there? Um, who were your last bosses? Who would you work for? What's your work experience, strengths, skills? Um, what don't you like doing? What do you like doing? Do you ever play – this is my favorite question. Do you ever play team sports in high school? Oh, you did? Great. Or you didn't? Why not? Or you did? Oh, did you like the coach? Yeah, he was okay. Did you get along with everybody? Well, sort of. Uh, tell me about the good and the bad about the coach. And just from that right there, you're going to find out if he's a team player. Uh, and any questions? Okay, so sounds great. Let's set up an interview. Can you come in tomorrow or the next day, or can I meet you somewhere? I'd love to talk to you. So that's the key. Keep it fast. Keep it simple. Make it happen, right? And let's talk about promotion from within now. How do we create opportunities for growth? promotion, training, moving up the ladder. So everybody says, I need, I, I talk to my clients. I got a bunch of civil contractors that do pipe and earthwork, and I got a lot of guys in the crew, 30, 40, 50 guys. And I say, you know, I need more foremen. I said, well, how many guys you got? 40 on the crew. You don't have one guy out of 40 who's, who you think has the potential to move up? Nah. I said, what, you got all dummies? What's, what are you kidding me? Do you even know these guys? You don't know them. Uh, have you even talked to these guys? Have you have you run an ad in your own company that you're looking for someone who wants to become a foreman? And what about your current foreman? Are they working hard to promote from within and train and train their replacement or lead? What, what are you doing about that? And they'll say, well, I don't know. I'm just going to hire somebody. Well, you hire somebody, it's a, it's a crapshoot. You might get lucky and you get a good one, or you might not. You just don't know. Uh, or they might stay for three weeks and adios, go back to their old company. So what about you? You got somebody on your team you don't even think about? You walk right by them every day. They probably want to move up. And if you don't let them move up, eventually they're going to move on for another dollar an hour. So what are you doing to develop your own team, right? So uh, you, you, what are you doing to develop a winning team, your talent, your people, your leaders, performance, managers, foremen? Anybody, what are you doing? You doing anything? Well, if not, it ain't happening. That's why you're watching the video for, for almost an hour now, a little more than an hour. So, uh, so what do we have to do? We have to have a proactive performance with from within program. Gotta help people get to the next level. So we gotta push it in our team meetings, we gotta push it, we gotta have some training programs, we gotta have a career ladder, we've got to move to that level so people know exactly what we're trying to do. So we've got to have a program to help people get to the next level. So I want you to think about that. Uh, what's your program? What's your training program? Do you have a ladder? Uh, or do, are, you, uh, are you moving to the next level? I thought I had my slide. Oh, here we go. Do you have a career promotion ladder? So we get all these people. How do we get them to go up the ladder? Do we have an apprentice and a pr uh, then it's a journeyman, and then a lead, and then it's assistant foreman, and a foreman, and a superintendent, general foreman. Do, we, do you have a ladder? And at each level, you have a list of what requirements to get to that level. Crew labor, one, two, three. Uh, foreman, one, two, three. And at each level, we have different criteria of, of ca capacity and capabilities that they require to get to the next level. And each level is a higher pay. So if they're not willing to get to the next level, they don't deserve more pay. Now, I know that the 
they're going to tell the, their, your competitor that they're, you know, they're doing everything. But uh, the key is, do you have a promotion from within program? Do you have a training program? Uh, do you have anything to get people to move to the next level? I, training is not, is not, it doesn't happen unless you do it. On-the-job training is not good enough. You need to have formal training, how to do things, how to how to service a truck, how to service a backhoe, how to how to make sure you got the right pricing on a change order. All that requires learning and training and coaching and consulting and mentoring. So most people say, "Yeah, we're we're trying to hire a few good help, uh, you know," but we, it's just not happening. So we've got to in, uh, implement. Oh, let me just go back one more. We just got to implement this ongoing training program. Got to make it happen. Um, we got to set a budget for it. We got to put somebody in charge of it. And, and if there's outside education, we give them a, a reimbursement up to a level. We develop a curriculum. You know, I don't know about you, but most companies have at least 30 systems. Well, that's 30 training opportunities. If you did one every two weeks, it's like you're going to go through the whole thing in a year almost. So, uh, or one a week out in the field, you know, that's 52 weeks. Well, split it in two, do 25 and 25. And there's just training, you know, just how to do things, how to make sure the slab's right, how to make sure our lumber's cut right, how to build stairs, how to pour concrete, how to make sure we don't have air going in the concrete. Uh, how do we make sure the slab doesn't crack? There's so many things, just, it's unlimited. What are you doing about it? Blueprint reading, that's big. Contract, read, how to read the contract. How to read a subcontract, um, et cetera, et cetera. English is a second language or first language, all these kinds of things. And then we set a training calendar. So we, we, we develop a training program, followed up by a career path, and, uh, and then a, a new hire uh, orientation and mentorship program. So we need that part three of this program. Okay, so think about where you are and what you can do in your company to build a future for your people, to build a great place to work, and I'm here to help. So hopefully I've covered enough things in our in an hour and uh, 10 minutes here, as fast as I could. Uh, I didn't really get to some of the stuff I wanted to cover, but, but you know, you, you've got the gist. You know what to do. If you need some help, give me an email. We'll set up a time to talk. I do ongoing, regular uh, webinars. You're welcome to watch them. Um, I have a YouTube channel. Just type in George Hadley YouTube. And I've got all sorts of training videos on there. And I also sell online training, and I've got templates. So anything I can do to help you, I'd love to help you. So give me a call, and hopefully I see you next time a lot richer with a lot more employees that are doing a fabulous job.